Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be here with you at the fourth International Conference on Economics and Development, where you are deliberating on an interesting topic, Rethinking Competitiveness, the Global Value Chain Revolution. I think it's important for us to uh, reflect on this topic, particularly in the context of the current developments in the world, where we have seen the COVID-19 impact affecting almost every type of behavior and every type of activity in the world. The entire world has begun to work differently. The entire world is now thinking differently, reacting differently, trading differently, manufacturing differently, even having conferences differently. This kind of a conference in the past would have been where people would have been seated at a conference hall and then there would have been uh, the speakers coming over to the podium and speaking there. But now we have changed all that. COVID actually has changed all that. And what we are seeing now is different, but it's also a new normal that we are talking of. This has become the normal. So today our conference that we are all participating is different to the earlier one. We are talking from our homes, our offices. We are listening to the conference from our own offices or our homes. So it's an interesting trend that we have set. It's an interesting new development that we have to all deal with. So in that sense, there has been a kind of a rethinking. There has been a repositioning. There has been a reinventing. So I believe we are reflecting on the topic of rethinking competitiveness in an era where there has been a true repositioning of the world and of whatever that we are doing. Now, this particular conference is also reflecting on the global value chain and you have se selected a few specialized tracks on which this conference is going to be working on and reflecting on. I thought I will touch on a few of the topics that um, uh, are familiar to me so that it will be easier for me to reflect on how we should rethink, particularly in the context of the new era that we are just embarking upon. Let's take macroeconomic issues, which is something which is dear to my heart because I know how important the macroeconomy is for any person to do business and any person to be competitive. Take for example the interest rate. In almost all businesses we see interest as being one of the key components of the value chain as well as the costs of a business. Many people are leveraged, many organizations are leveraged, which means that you would have loans, you would have the need to borrow, and when you borrow, you naturally have to repay, and repayment doesn't only have to be done as far as the capital repayment is concerned, you have to pay interest, and the interest rates can fluctuate. And depending on the interest rate, you would find that businesses can actually be profitable, or not profitable or break even and the very existence of the business or entrepreneurship or the enterprise would be dependent to some extent on the price that you pay for capital. So in that context the macroeconomy is very important because the macroeconomic conditions determines the normal prices or values at which some of these components of the macroeconomy are traded or are uh, reflected in the macroeconomy. So interest rate is a key component and interest rate is often a function of interest, uh, of uh, inflation and if a country can maintain price stability where the interest rates are uh, naturally lower because the inflation is low, 
you would find that those countries are actually a lot more competitive than others which are not. So that's why some countries like Japan which has very low interest rates or even the US where the interest rates are very low are able to compete easier than countries which have higher interest rates uh, to be paid on the capital that they have. So I think all countries, all governments and all central banks must be cautious that they manage these fundamentals carefully because on those fundamentals would be an economy which is resting and the, the ability of the business people and, and, and enterprise to be able to afford these interest rates is definitely a key component of their profitability or their uh, loss making uh, uh, situation. So any country which has a competitive interest rate which is low, which is manageable, is definitely at a competitive, has a competitive edge over the others. The other is the exchange rate. If a country has an exchange rate which is providing the support to whatever business that they're doing, sometimes it is import business, sometimes it is export business, whichever way it is, the country's exchange rate is a single value of its currency with which it trades with others and that's a very important figure to have a very key, a very useful balance if you are to go forward. Naturally, the exchange rate will have different connotations for different people. An importer would definitely like the exchange rate to tighten so that the outlay that he or she would have to make as far as their imports are concerned would be low. An exporter would naturally like to have a, a less tight exchange rate which means when they have foreign currency coming into the country you will have a bigger chunk of rupees. In the same way people who send remittances into this country would like to have a, a depreciated exchange rate. People when they are borrowing they like to have a depreciated exchange rate but when they are paying back they want to see that it is at a more compressed or appreciated exchange rate. So exchange rate can have different uh, values uh, as expected or expected values can be different one to another and from one period to another. So what it means is the country's reserve bank or the central bank will have to determine the macro fundamental or rather position the micro fundamentals in such a way that you truly provide a competitive edge to a country to go forward and that's a very tough call but it needs to be done and sometimes when people say I'm leaving it to the market that alone is not sufficient because the market alone will have different players who will have different strengths at different times and if they are stronger at one time than the others then there must definitely be some element of control or some element of support or some element of intervention that is possible or to be at least felt to be possible because otherwise the exchange rate can sometimes be tilted or skewed in respect of one side of the coin only. So competitiveness will also determine or demand that the exchange rate is uh, in a great way, uh, behaving in the way that the country would greatly benefit and that's another very key element of the competitiveness that we are looking at. So when you rethink competitiveness, you got to think on those lines and uh, determine whether you are providing the necessary stability to the and the support for competitiveness to occur in the economy. Another part is with regard to the social factors. Here again, we need to have a country which is stable because that's a very important part of a country's future growth. If you have people who are not satisfied, people who are in a board which is not very friendly towards the country's business sectors, you would find that, that actually puts a lot of pressure on the growth momentum going forward. 
So a clear reflection on the stability, on the need to ensure that people are able to carry out their businesses without having to deal with other external issues, which are sometimes tough, will also determine your competitiveness. I also think that in any country, its infrastructure, both the soft infrastructure as well as the hard infrastructure, should continue to improve on a regular basis. When I say hard infrastructure, I'm talking about the roads, I'm talking about airports, ports, as well as the uh, the uh, human, uh, as well as the uh, provision of electricity, what the humans need, like electricity, like water, those are all very important parts of support to industry and providing competitiveness. And those also need to be at reasonable prices. If one country has electricity that is generated at a very high cost and another country has electricity generated at a very low cost, you will naturally find that the competitiveness is determined by those factors and that sometimes the country which has the lower electricity cost can be, can perhaps uh, be at a huge advantage over the other that does not have. So the prices of those specialized areas which support business are very, very important and that's something that we need to reflect on on a continuous basis. So a country will have to look at its competitiveness from the eyes of power, of energy, of infrastructure and naturally there needs to be investment into those areas if the country is to proceed and prosper. At the same time, we also need to have the other supportive infrastructure like hospitals, like schools, like leisure, like the sports activities, like the entertainment. These are all part and parcel of a good society that will support the well-being of that society. And that, that's very important too because if an investor wishes to go to a particular country, they will want to see whether there is good uh, food outlets, whether the restaurants are good, whether the entertainment is good, whether the sports activities are good. So all those need to be looked at very closely. At the same time, the human capital is another very important uh, part of the whole exercise and the human capital needs to be trained. They need to be focused on the type of activities that are being carried out in that country and what the country can really be providing to those businesses as well as enterprises that are now looking at developing their own networks and their own standard of, of uh, delivery of various uh, services as well as activities. So good training, good education are vital factors if a country wishes to have an overall competitiveness derived in, the, in, a, in a, uh, any economy. So overall, my dear friends, I think we need to look at the competitiveness from different angles and competitive, competitiveness does not only come from the research as well as the product as well as the activities at a particularly uh, at a particular given time. It is, an, it is, it has to embrace all these matters and I believe it's time that we reflect on all these matters and rethink our positioning with regard to all that if you have to move forward. Now that's part of the macro side but in addition to that I think there are many many other factors. So these are all important. I think you are looking at the banking and finance, the environmental aspects, the um, international trade aspects, the customs, the port activities, where the port, whether the port is, uh, is uh, uh, efficient or not, then your litigation, is the litigation system or the legal system supportive of businesses. So in economics, all these factors have a critical role to play. Sometimes if one of these factors or one or two of these factors don't work well, you can see that those countries can actually suffer quite severely. As you know, if any person has um, uh, to uh, look at a dashboard 
you and for the journey to take place without any incident, you need to have all the systems working well. Even if one or two systems are failing, you would find that the entire journey can be in jeopardy. So that's why I believe it's important to reflect on all the different types of activities that any business is doing and that has to be supported by the macro fundamentals that are existing in the country. And if you are able to do that, I think that is what is mostly needed in going forward. The government, uh, which, is, uh, which has been elected recently, is conscious of these factors. We are conscious of the fact that competitiveness can be only assured with good systems, well implemented, and where the macro fundamentals stay in benign levels. So these are important factors for us to drive through to, for us to ensure are happening. And you can be sure that our government will be keen to provide that basic support for businesses to stay competitive and to make sure that they can move with their businesses without having to worry, worry too much about other outside extraneous circumstances. So my dear friends, uh, I attempted to give you a brief outline uh, perhaps to set the stage for the conference that would follow. I appreciate the time that you have taken to, uh, to uh, examine this topic closely and I also appreciate the time that you have provided to me to have these few words with you and I wish your conference all success. Thank you very much.